Year 10 and 11, welcome to your comparison of the poems War Photographer and Poppies in preparation for your AQA English Literature Poetry Exam. Some connectives to consider using when comparing poems are as follows. The connectives at the top are for when things are different and the connectives at the bottom in red are for when things are similar. Whereas, on the other hand, however, in contrast, unlike and alternatively. And then if things are similar in the poems, we might use similarly, likewise, equally, as with and in the same way. A variation of the word shows, not that you shouldn't use the word shows, but just in case you need a variation so it's not too repetitive. We've got a list of words here, suggests, implies, outlines, highlights, describes, communicates, connotes, emphasises, reveals, displays, establishes, portrays, represents, illustrates, informs, means, conveys and symbolises. So that's just a variation there on the word shows. We're going to start with structure in the two poems and have a look at the similarities and the differences. Down the left then is War Photographer in red and down the right is Poppies in blue. So in War Photographer we have four regular stanzas which reflect the strict routine of the military. This rigid order contrasts with the chaos of war. The regular stanzas also reflect the photographer's life. He feels he is restoring order to it after being in war. Also, another interpretation is that each stanza could possibly represent the different photographs that he takes. And another interpretation, which isn't on the slide, is that the four regular stanzas represent the routine of his life, the taking of the photographs, the carelessness of the British public when viewing the photographs. War photographer also uses rhyming couplets, showing the contrasting emotions between the detached reader and the soldiers involved in the war. The idea that the reader does not care and the soldiers are in turmoil and sacrificing their life for the reader. The rhyming couplet can also signify the fact that the photographer is clinical when doing his job and detached, but when he returns home, he is more emotional. War photographer also uses enjambment, and this represents the inevitability of conflict within society. The idea that war and conflict is very difficult to stop. And more specifically in this poem, the role of the photographer continues in the same way. Taking photographs, return home, no one cares. Take photographs, return home, no one cares. Shazera is also used, which is a break within a poetic line. The photographer realises what he has taken photographs of. He tries to compose himself and his emotions, and this is futile, because inevitably he breaks down. And finally, in war photography, you have Volta. Volta is the change in tone, and that happens at the line, something is happening. As the photograph begins to develop... The war photographer realises what he has taken a photograph of and becomes distressed. If we move to Poppies. Poppies uses a four irregular stanzas, so there's our first difference, which represents the mother's experience and the change in her emotions, which increase in severity as the poem progresses. And it also shows us that she is not prepared for her son to leave. Another difference is that Poppies uses free verse. This is, highlights the freedom the son wants to explore the world, which links to the simile, the world overflowing like a treasure chest. Also the free verse highlights that the mother feels lost without her son. In a similar way to war photographer, Poppies uses Shazera, and I think it's for a similar reason. The mother is trying to remain calm and composed, but breaks 
down. So every time there's, in, uh, there's an instance of Shazira in the poem, it's the breaking down of the mother. Then she tries to compose herself and she breaks down again. Naturally, she has lost her child. And then just some additional things for poppies is that is in a non-chronological order, which shows us that she um, constantly remembers the past and returns to memories. And that links us then to the fact that the past and the present tense is used. And this signifies memories. Time moves on, but the mother can't. She is trapped. She is trapped with the memories of her son that she doesn't want to give up or let go. OK, I hope that's been useful. If you don't know the terms such as Shazira and Jambam and Volta, Free Verse, etc., um, please go on to my individual videos for War Photographer and Poppies, which are on my YouTube channel, and it is all explained there. We are now going to move to language in the two poems. Same again, War Photographer is on the left in red and Poppies is on the right in blue and this is language. So, War Photographer, we get the pronoun his and it shows us that we are detached from the photographer and the soldiers. But it also shows us that the photographer tries to remain detached from the soldiers as well because he has a job to do. The adjective dark has connotations of death. When it says in his dark room he is finally alone, we are reminded of death and also we have a negative tone created and it's created instantly. Again in that line, in his dark room he is finally alone, we get the word finally. Okay? The adverb finally indicates the desperation of the soldier. The desperation is that he is now away from the conflict and this is probably what he's longed for. We've got emotive language in the word alone. This room where he develops the photos is a place of safety for him away from war. We then go straight into metaphor in the second line via enjambement spools of suffering and in that metaphor we have the alliteration of the s spools of suffering and it makes the suffering more permanent and more memorable for the reader and the photographer alike the word spools has an implication of chaos and the idea that death cannot be stopped in a war zone The only light is red and softly glows. Adjective red is symbolic of death, blood, danger. And it's the red, the colour red that's in, in the photography room. He is consistently reminded of what he has faced as he stands in this room and looks at the photograph. Notice that line I mentioned earlier, he has a job to do and it starts stanza two and it is a short, simple sentence and it's matter of fact and there's no time for him to show his emotion during his job when he's taking the photographs and it almost links back to the idea that the reader doesn't care. So there's a bit of a link there. So in the moment when he's taking the pictures, he doesn't, he hasn't got time to care. And now when he's looking, he does. Solutions slop in trees. Again, look at our alliteration here of the S. And it sounds harsh and it sounds uncomfortable. And it refers to how he hopes that these photos will resolve the conflict. But look at slop. There's a carelessness, isn't there? And that's a theme throughout this poem. We are often asked at the end of this poem, do we care? Do we care enough? And then, solution, slop in trees beneath his hands, which did not tremble then, though seem to now tremble. It's emotive. The, um, he wasn't emotional during the war, but he is now. He tries to distance himself from the people during the conflict like the detachment the reader feels. But now, as he looks at the photographs 
and realises what they are, he suffers. And he physically and emotionally suffers, highlighted by the word tremble. I've got more to say about war photographer um, on the following slides, but before we do that, we'll just have a look at poppies, which is on the right here. So we'll start with poppies. So the first and second person are used, as I mentioned. If you do want to put that in structure, then you might want to put it in language. I mentioned this on my uh, poppies video, so please have a look at the video. The first and second person shows us her last memory of her son and then the visiting of the memorial. And there's a shift in time to show the different ways she remembers him and how she grieves. And don't forget, in this poem, she speaks directly to him as if trying to keep his memory alive. And we know that through the pronoun you. Beginning with stanza one, then we get three days before Armistice Sunday. Now, Armistice Sunday is important because it sets up the tone of the poem and this image of poppies, and it links it to remembrance, death, and respect. It kind of foreshadows the rest of the poem. And in stanza one, we get the crimped petals. Before you left, I pinned one onto your lapel, crimped petals, spasms of paper red. Now, this image of crimped petals foreshadows something that is ruined. The poppy is ruined. Her son is ruined. Her life is ruined. And the word spasms is uncomfortable and it reminds us of something painful. And therefore, there is a link here to the son's death. Also, in stanza one, we have got graves. When it says that poppies have been placed on individual war graves and graves is emotive language. And look, it is plural and it highlights how many men have lost their lives. And that links us back to the title, Poppies. As I mentioned earlier, we also get the direct pronoun you before you left. She addresses her son as if she's talking to him. And it's this refusal to let him go. And then the personal pronoun of I is more emotional because we feel like we can connect to her. She then removes the cat hair from his suit, which is the beginning of stanza two. So you can imagine the son standing at the door ready to leave and there's some cat hair on his blazer and she gets it off with sellotape. Now we are told that the sellotape is bandaged around her hand. Now bandaged once again is symbolic of an injury and therefore we have suggestions that the death of her son has been something painful. And also it actually implies that the memories she has of her son are in fact contaminated by the idea that he's died. Also in stanza two, we get another important metaphor, which is that she steeled the softening of her face. Now, steeled the softening of her face is metaphor because she's trying her best to be strong and brave in front of her son. If we carry on with more language then, again, I'll start with war photographer and then move to poppies just so we're keeping the same routine. And in War Photographer now, we have an interesting line when we hear ordinary pain. So he says, home again to ordinary pain, which simple weather can dispel. Now that is interesting because it's very trivial. It's the trivial idea that we feel happy based on the weather forecast. We've all had those days where we're happy because it's sunny or we feel down because it's snowy and cold or, or dark. Now, what is terrifying about that is the adjective ordinary ordinary pain because I think what's being said here is that our pain is nothing in comparison to the families of soldiers and the pain of the soldiers and in terms of what the soldiers suffer and we realize that our pain and our emotions based on weather is something trivial and something silly actually and when it says Home again to ordinary pain, which simple weather can dispel. It's, it is the idea that weather can change our mood. 
we have children mentioned at the ends of stanza two as well, which don't explode beneath the feet of children running in a nightmare heat. And again, it's this idea that our children, i.e. the children in Britain, are free to play. And nightmare in that last line is that we take our lives for granted because there's children in other countries who are living in an actual nightmare, in a conflict, in a war zone. And I suppose it puts our lives in perspective. When we move to stanza three, that starts in an interesting way as well, because that starts with something is happening. Another short little sentence. It's very abrupt. And that is where your volta takes place, where the poem changes tone. And it creates drama and suspense because it sounds like the war photographer has no control. Probably much like how he felt during the war zone. And then we get a stranger's features faintly start to twist before his eyes, a half-formed ghost. And this is imagery, and it's the image of the man dying, the half-formed ghost. And the painful word twist. So the, as the picture gradually develops, he realises that the man is dead. And then we get this word stranger. And that again is an idea of detachment because we think, well, do we care? Do we care if it's a stranger in a foreign country? And as I say, twist there, the stranger's features faintly start to twist before his eyes. It does sound uncomfortable. And it's probably because what the war photographer viewed then and what he views now is something horrific. It's the death of somebody. He remembers the cries of this man's wife, how he sought approval without words to do what someone must and how the blood stained into foreign dust. Now, he needs approval from the soldier's wife. We can probably assume that he gives her maybe a look or something like that and then we get the emotive language cries. He remembers the wife crying. The poem here in stanza three gets a lot more emotive and then the metaphor, blood stained into foreign dust, is important because the memory is unforgettable and war cannot be forgetten, for, sorry, forgotten. And it's this idea that pain lasts, it stains. Okay, but again, when we think of foreign dust, it does sort of link to the end and and back to stranger and the question is how much do we care about the soldier if he's not one of our own and that is a harrowing idea in my opinion okay again i've got more to say about war photographer which i'll bring up on the next slide after we've done a bit more on poppies so poppies in stanza two because we're still there we've got two memories being described we've got the son leaving home and the memory of him being a child and we get the line Play at Eskimo, being Eskimos like we did when you were little. And that is over three lines because enjambment is used. So it spreads out and it is this prolonging of the memory. And play, the word play and the word little, it's childhood innocence. And it's the memory she loves and it's the memory she won't let go. The, the one she clings to, her child. And, and there's an innocence there. And it is emotive for the reader because we realise that she's cherishing the memories that she has and then after little we get our shazura which is probably as i say the instance where she would probably break down and then we get i resisted the impulse to run my fingers through the gelled black thorns of your hair metaphor it's as if he's prickly towards she's he's prickly towards her because he's a grown man and he's not really affectionate to her anymore and he's a bit standoffish which is a sad idea for the reader considering he's, he's not going to return. And, and this links us into slowly melting, which is further on in the poem. The mother does break down. And the breakdown happens at the beginning of stanza three. And your, um, your line is, all my words flattened, rolled, turned into felt, slowly melting. And this... As I say, this metaphor is her breaking down and the fact that her words uh, she's, are full of emotion. She's trying to fight it off, but she can't, which is why her words are, are flattened and rolled and felt. And remember, felt is something vulnerable that you can kind of 
uh, maneuver into different shapes if you like. We've got the emotive language in the word brave as well. I was brave as I walked with you to the front door and threw it open. There's a lot of Shazera there as well. I was brave, pause. As I walked with you, pause. To the front door, pause. Threw it open, pause. The world overflowing like a treasure chest, pause. The Shazera is huge here because she has to keep stopping to ensure she doesn't lose control. And she's brave because she lets him leave and she lets him go to war. And the simile, like a treasure chest, is this idea that he wants to experience the world. He's excited about it. Uh, he compares it, it's compared to treasure. And then when we get the next line that he was intoxicated, it, it is this idea that he's excited about being independent and going off. After that, the mother goes to his bedroom and it says, after you'd gone, I went into your bedroom and released a songbird from its cage. And the image of the songbird she releases is a symbol of innocence and it's the symbol of freedom, that he's been released from a cage. She's, he's free to be independent. But we then get later a single dove flew from the pear tree and the dove is the symbol of innocence and that is her child this innocent child that she's let leave, okay? And after she's been to his bedroom, again, we return to emotion. Uh, she says that her stomach was busy, making tux darts, pleats, hatless without a winter coat. So her stomach making tux darts and, ple and pleats is that she's anxious and worried and sick. She feels sick at the thought of her son in a war zone, potentially being vulnerable, being unsafe, and her not being there to protect him as a mother. Maternal instinct. Okay. Bring up the next slide. So back to war photographer then. We get the metaphor, 100, 100 agonies in black and white. Um, the images are painful. So as he stands looking at the images, they are painful. Naturally, so look at that word, agonies, and it's plural, so we know that there's obviously more than one. Um, from which his editor will pick out five or six. So the editor puts all of these pictures in front of him and he has to pick a few. And the, hun the hundred contrasts with five or six. And again, there's a subtle indication there that the editor has no regard and doesn't care as long as he picks out the best pictures for the paper and, and pictures that will sell the paper. And the reader's eyeballs prick with tears between bath and pre-lunch beers. For a fleeting second, the reader feels upset, but it passes because we move on and we, do, we move on in our lives in terms of the activities that we're doing. He stays impassively at where he earns a living and they do not care. Now, that's how the poem finishes and it's massive. We have got the pronoun they. He feels detached from us. He feels detached from the readers of the paper. And interestingly, the poem finishes with, they do not care. And actually, it's quite sad because he accepts that the photos he has taken make no difference. Um, and that concludes the whole poem. So the title is War Photographer. And the last line in War Photographer is they do not care. And that's interesting. If we return to Poppy then on the other side, the stanza four, on reaching the top of the hill, I trace the inscriptions on the war memorial. Now, hill here is metaphorical of a struggle. Her son has died. And the hill is almost a step too far. It's something she has to struggle up every day to try and get over it, and she can't. And then she traces the inscription on the war memorial, and that's obviously grief. Massive simile, leaned against it like a wishbone. A wishbone is something that's easy to break. We've all had them. You, you know, you snap them with your little fingers, don't you? And it's an idea that's just fragile. She is a broken woman. Perhaps though, with a wishbone, she's making she she. It's the idea that she wishes he would return, and naturally he doesn't. 
And then we get our symbolism again of the dove. The dove pulled freely against the sky. The dove again, innocence, adverb freely. The sun is actually free from the horrors of war now. Whether that's comforting, I don't know. I listened, hoping to hear your playground voice catching on the wind. Look at hoping. She wants to hear him again. She wants to see him play. This image of innocence, she wants her little son back. Uh, and, and, uh, and it ends quite sadly here because we have the image of a woman at a grave praying for her son's return. I've just added some extra information on there about poppies in terms of sound. So like the form, the sounds of the poem are restrained. We've got colour and texture mentioned and they're quite prominent in the description of the blazer. Uh, the spasms of red, the blockade of yellow, but it creates a sense of doom. There's a contrast between death and domestic happiness as the mother tries to block out the image and thought of the son's death. And in the last stanza, the language becomes metaphorical and symbolic. The songbird is the metaphor for the mother setting the child free. This becomes the dove, a symbol of peace. But here, the peace the sun has found is only the peace of death. Okay. I hope this comparison of all photographer and poppies has been useful. Don't forget to check out the individual videos for these poems because there's more detail on there if you need any more of my videos please type my name into youtube it's stacey ray s-t-a-c-e-y and ray is r-e-a-y and massive good luck in your english literature poetry exam